Looking at that boat in the morning light, it's just so gorgeous. It's really hard to believe that we're actually considering moving our lives onto this boat. When we found out about Atticus's bulkhead, it was just such an all-time low, you know? And standing here looking at this boat, I just, I'm amazed that it really turned around. And I feel so lucky. Man, what a beautiful boat. Yeah. <laughs> I can't actually believe that that might be Atticus too. It's really bizarre. I can imagine like walking around a boat yard and seeing a boat like that splashing and being like, wow, that's a really nice boat. Those owners must be really proud of that boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So we haven't bought the boat yet, but um, we have an accepted offer on it. And basically what that means is that uh, tomorrow we're gonna be doing a sea trial. So we're gonna take the boat out. It's gonna be the two of us, our broker Bernie, a surveyor. I think the selling broker is gonna be there. And we're basically just gonna test all the systems and make sure that everything works like it's supposed to. And if everything does work, then we're gonna buy it. All right, well, welcome to our new home. This is our nice little hotel room in Brantford, Connecticut. We'll be staying here until we potentially close on Atticus 2 on our next boat. So in last week's episode, we were kind of weighing the pros and cons of the Valiant 42 in Seattle or the Pacific Seacraft 40 in Brantford. And we ended up going with the Pacific Seacraft 40, um, mostly because I think it'll have a really nice interior for a family of yeah. four, which we hope to start pretty soon. And financially, it's just a way better option. The Pacific Seacraft 40 offers so much more value um, and we can use the money that we save to really outfit it uh, exactly how we want to in the next couple of months. So as I mentioned earlier, this Pacific Seacraft 40 was asking 230, and we made an offer of, I think initially it was 200,000. Mm -hmm. And they rejected that offer and brought it up to 210. And so that's what our offer on that boat is right now, 210,000. Tomorrow, we are going to be doing the sea trial and survey. It'll give us the opportunity to potentially pull out if the boat isn't in the condition we thought it was in, or we can adjust the price if there are systems that need some fixing. Uh, and then if it's perfect and nothing wrong, then we just go ahead and buy the boat. A lot is kind of coming down to the wire tomorrow because we've been, I mean, I've been researching for Atticus 2 for years now. And then, you know, the last couple months we've been on this boat road trip and talking to experts and trying to learn as much as we can and like, all of that work and research and time is just is going to culminate in tomorrow with this sea trial. So the next step is we're going to uh, tomorrow morning meet our surveyor Dave for the first time and just have breakfast and kind of chat over the game plan. Yeah, What's up, dude? Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> yes, are you excited Glad to do about it. today's uh, big survey? Uh, probably not as excited as yeah. you guys, but yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should yeah. be a good time. So what's the goal today? What's the game plan? Really, I'm just trying to give you guys the best information you can for the vessel. I'm trying to be objective to let you know, hey, this is your boat, and these are the faults that I found, these are the good things that I found. Because a lot of times when the purchaser is on the boat, you can be emotionally invested in it. So you might overlook something and be like, yeah, that battery's got 18 terminal lugs on the battery there, but it's a really good boat. <laughs> so sometimes it's good to have a disinterested third party to say, yeah, yeah, sure, it's a great boat. Just so you know, you might want to take a look at some of this other stuff too. So hopefully when we get back, you guys will have uh, all the information you need to, to make a good decision on your next boat. Yeah, thank you so much for like, 
this has been a interesting experience and yeah. we're learning a lot so it's so nice to have people who are so experienced and so like friendly and cool <laughs> so, don't cry buddy <laughs> shut it <laughs>
and just standing here looking at the instruments, it's a whole nother world of like information in front of me. day yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was productive though we definitely like found a couple systems that have some issues no huge red flags in fact if anything it was kind of surprising being on a boat where like every system for the most part functioned you know I'd be yeah. like hot water hot <laughs> yeah yeah pressure water pressurized like, yeah everything was radar Looks yeah, good. That, that works. <laughs> I guess I was just in shock. It's yeah. just like really hitting me for the first time that like this is going to be the boat that we're actually going to be living on. Yeah. It just feels so crazy. I feel so lucky. We've got the rig survey tomorrow morning. So a really good rigger friend of ours um, is coming to just sort of check everything involving the mast and the rigging and the lines and just make sure that that's all in you know good condition and, and good to go. So. Time to get some sleep and to hit it again tomorrow morning. Hit it, rig it, quit it. Getting riggy with it. I'm the riganator. I'm a rigger, you idiot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get down. Get down. <laughs> All right, good morning. So day two of the survey, and today we've got our rigging expert, Tim, helping us out. And uh, we're gonna be going over everything uh, that we can and seeing what what he thinks of the condition of the rig. The rig, meaning the mast boom and all the wires and hardware that keep the mast and boom in place is arguably the most important system on the boat. But finding and identifying major and minor concerns with the rig can be very difficult for an amateur. Having Tim go over every little detail with me and pointing out potential problems was super helpful and gave me a great head start on our boat project list should we buy this boat. Get the balls. The balls are getting flattened. I can feel it. Basically, I call them speed bumps. Yeah. Minute speed bumps. Yeah, right. All four of these springs aren't attached to, so you can, these things engage with the spring. One's missing and three of them are not attached. You're in good shape. Yeah. Tall but good shape. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You mean the me or the boat? You. Okay, I mean good. <laughs> yeah, overall, what, what, what's your uh, overall diagnosis? It's a 23 year old mast. Yeah. You know, the rigging is original. I, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah. I think you can, in time, I think you can do it yourself. You've done it before. Yeah. And were there so, any red flags overall? Nah. Uh, personally, no. It's just the, ma the, the mass is in good shape. It just needs a little loving. Yeah, gotcha. You know? Cool. Well, thanks a lot, Tim. I Thank really you. appreciate the help. Yeah. It's and great. Like we said, we really appreciate all the help you've given us, you know, <laughs> over like the last Thank year. You. Thank yeah. you. I didn't learn this overnight. Yeah, right. I've just been able to be, to be around a lot of great people yeah. that taught me there. And then I'm doing it now. Yeah. I'm playing it forward. Just got done with the rig survey with Tim and basically nothing crazy, no reasons not to buy it. So yeah, what's what's next, Bernie? Uh, what's pretty much next is after two days of surveys. If you guys ever need a good surveyor, this guy's really good, or very thorough, and I mean that very much so. I haven't been in business for 25 years. So Dave, what did you really actually find that were really important? Uh, well, I, I went ahead and emailed you guys the, the full report, so you have that already before I take off. Some of the bigger things I think you might be concerned about is the electrical system. So. Um, the way the wiring is run on the boat. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like it's bad, it's not gonna cause you a fire as soon as you start the boat, but there are some things uh, that are, have room for improvement there. And then the alternator is not currently charging. I'm not positive why that happened, but I tested that several times with different meters. Uh, you're not getting any charge voltage coming out of there. And same thing with the inverter. Uh, the inverter is not turning DC into AC power. It is, but it's just not doing it the right way. So for instance, instead of having 120 volts coming out of the inverter, you guys have like 80 or 90 for some reason. Gotcha, and I mean, that's important basically because, well, especially the alternator, we wouldn't be able to leave shore power. Right, right, right. That's yeah. right. And then the inverter, I mean, we can kind of live with that, but it's still a major part of the whole system. 
but being your broken things is sort of the most important critical component is that we don't sweat the small stuff. And it is, a, a, and, and negotiations is really based on making good music between the buyer and the seller where everybody feels comfortable with the decision. We don't sweat the small stuff and light bulbs, you know, a stuck shiv here or there, okay? A, a, one, one little rope clutch, but when, a, you're just gonna strictly be a 12 volt boat. So the core of the boat being 12 volt is not functioning properly. Yeah. And even if you don't buy the boat, it's still gonna be the seller's responsibility to make the boat saleable and sellable to the next person. But because you guys are buying the boat, we have to come to a conclusion that works for all parties involved. So I'm gonna go back and add up what I think this work is gonna curtail. I come back with a, a number that's gonna be workable for you, Des and Jordan, and then we send it to the listing broker, Dave Randeron at Crusader Yacht Sales, and let him do his work and earn his money and work with us as a team. So that's where yeah. we're at. Wow, so this whole process has been pretty exhausting, but I just cannot wait to move on to this boat. It just, it already feels like home. So hopefully the paperwork goes well and we can move in in a couple of days. Well, we are uh, here at a really cool, really pretty park in Branford. And we're just kind of trying to walk off a little bit of anxiety that we've got right now. Um, after the rigging survey, which was yesterday, we sent in our revised like price adjustment. And basically to fix everything that we found in the surveys uh, would cost on like an, at a minimum 7,500 but potentially more. So Bernie recommended that we adjust the price by 10,000 and that way if the seller came back and wanted to negotiate, we'd have a little bit of like elbow room before we get down to that minimum of what we think it would cost. And so that's what we did. We sent an adjustment, a survey adjustment of $10,000, sent that to the listing broker yesterday, right after the survey and uh, we haven't heard back. We had told them that we were hoping to make this process go quickly so we could move on board soon. So it's very surprising that we haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little worried. What do you think, bud? Yeah. How are you feeling? Ugh, I just feel super anxious, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I guess it's the uncertainty that's really getting to me. It's just, we haven't heard anything from them in 24 hours, more than 24 hours. I guess I'm just worried that it, like the deal might fall through or maybe we offended them or I don't really know. Like it's just this uncertainty. The boat hunt was stressful in and of itself, but when we finally kind of put our hearts and souls into like, okay, this is gonna be Atticus too. I've like put my heart into this boat and I've invested into this boat. But now I'm wondering if that's gonna be like sucked out from under me, if like it's not gonna happen, you know? So I know it's in a way maybe irrational or silly to worry this much, like maybe they're just busy. <laughs> um, but I'm just really anxious, yeah. It's been a stressful couple of days, <laughs> let me just tell you that. On Sunday, we did end up hearing back from the listing broker, and he basically said that the owner wasn't thrilled with our price adjustment that we sent. So he wanted to head down to the yard and kind of see everything for himself. We both met him at the yard on Monday to go take a look at the boat, and we walked him through all the items that we had on the price adjustment from the survey. And we basically got on the same page. He saw where we were coming from. Um, he did want to have someone from the yard check the core system issues that we found with the electrical system. And uh, long story short, the alternator started to work, which is awesome. So I'm not really sure why that happened. Maybe with the yard worker, we increased the RPMs of the engine higher than we did during the survey. Um, the yard worker was able to confirm that the inverter was not inverting. Now, all of this that like the, the owner coming down and checking out the boat and then the yard 
checking the boat. That whole thing took like three days. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yet like the amount of time that human beings needed to be doing stuff was like two hours top. <laughs> so it was a very like anxious, stressful couple of days. We're like trying to get the ball rolling. We're yeah. getting more familiar with the hotel room. We basically got together with Bernie, our broker, and sent off a revised purchase price adjustment. The new purchase price adjustment is asking 205. So it's a $5,000 adjustment. So now we are waiting to hear back mm -hmm. from the, the owner slash the listing broker. Mm -hmm. And we sent this revised price adjustment yesterday. So that mm -hmm. would have been Monday night and now it's Tuesday night. And so we haven't heard back in like 24 <laughs> hours, nothing. Like just yeah. zero communication. It'd be one thing if we were just like going about our normal daily lives, like going to work, living in, in where we live, or you know. If, or if they said, hey, we saw your adjustment, give us two days to get back to you. Then right. I could be like, okay, great. I can fill my time yeah. with like the appropriate amount of work yeah. and get some stuff done. But we've just so been like, like, any minute the phone could maybe ring. Maybe right now. Maybe and we're right like now. gonna move aboard, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just, just hasn't happened. So yeah. we're really hoping that they get back to us by tomorrow morning. Okay, well, we uh, still haven't heard back from the listing broker or the owner, and it's, uh, well, it's noon. It's 12 o'clock. It's noon? Yeah, so. Oh my God. God, I'm so nervous. I know. I'm just, at this point, I'm just so, like, dejected. You know, yeah. we get our hopes up every day, don't hear back. And then we just have to like extend our hotel day by day. <laughs> this hotel isn't really equipped for people to hang out like hermits in their room and like <laughs> use it like a little apartment, so. Yeah, there's no kitchen, there's no, yeah. So yeah. we're just making sandwiches for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Oh, here's our broker. Hey, Bernie. Yeah, no, that makes sense. No, I really appreciate you doing that. All right, see you, Bernie, bye. Oh, so Bernie was just saying that He's been trying to get a hold of the listing broker like all morning <laughs> and he's just not really been able to get in touch with them. He finally just drove down to their office and like <laughs> walked in and was like, listen, like what are we doing? I mean, it sounds like the listing broker is just really busy. He's got a lot going on. Right now, the listing broker and the seller are kind of going over the numbers for all the systems that would need to be worked on and replaced and seeing if $5,000 is appropriate. That's just a huge load off my mind. It's been like 36 hours now that we've just not really known if they were even interested in selling us the boat anymore. So we'll see. I don't know how long it's gonna take them to figure all this out, but hopefully soon. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice, Bernie. Virtu Woo! Virtual high five, man. <laughs> wow, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, we did it. <laughs> yeah. After all the waiting, it almost feels unreal, you know? Yeah. I really just, after five days, I was like, well, we're not ever getting a boat. <laughs> We're just gonna live in this hotel We're just forever. Live in this hotel. <laughs> We're just gonna grow old. This is our home now. Uh, okay. Well, he, so there you go. Yeah. That's uh, it's basically time to pack up and like move on to the boat. This yeah. <laughs> that is so exciting. Yeah. How's it feel? 
Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe this is our new home. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I know. Oh, oh, oh. man, how cool. This is home. Yeah. <laughs>